G'day everyone and welcome to the Track Zone Spotlight. Joining me on Skype Audio for today's episode is Mr. Dayton Ward in Kansas. Dayton, thanks so much for your time. Thanks for having me. I appreciate being here. Now, what got you started writing Star Trek novels? Well, I was bitten by another Star Trek novel writer. No, not really. Um, I started. <laughs> it's I, not one that we know, is it? Not the, well, no. Um, I started out. Um, I, I submitted stories to the very first Strange New Worlds contest way back in 1998, and after winning that contest uh, a number of times to the point where they, you know, I won them three times, so I was no longer eligible to submit because now I'm quote unquote a professional writer. Um, <laughs> Once the editor at the time, John Ordover, called to let me know they were buying my third story for the third contest, um, he asked me if I was interested in writing a Star Trek novel for him. And I, being an idiot, said, sure. What's the worst that could happen? Um, I had never written a novel before, so it was. Uh, so of course I said yes. And uh, I've been doing it ever since. I, I'm loving the novels that you've put together, um, but for the audience that may not be aware of you, give us some of your titles. Uh, my first novel for Pocket was a, was an original series uh, novel called In the Name of Honor, and it was set during the movie era of Kirk and the Gang. And then over the years, I've bounced around. I've worked on uh, a couple of the spinoff series that we that Pocket Books created called Star Trek Vanguard, Star Trek Starfleet Corps of Engineers. Um, I've also done a number of original series and next generation novels, um, and of course, the new Discovery novel. Well, tell us about that discovery model uh, novel because uh, I had a chat with David Mack, um, and he said it was an interesting experience because uh, because the series was so new uh, that media tie-in coordinator, uh, a lot of people from CBS were involved in in uh, David's book. It, was that a similar sort of experience for you? Oh yeah, um, there were more people involved, and they were more hands-on than uh, either of us were probably used to by this point. Both of both Dave and myself have been doing this for a long time and we have a very good relationship with the editors of Pocketbooks and we have a very good relationship with the folks at CBS licensing. Um, and they sort of trust us to do right by the property, you know, do right by the brand. And however, when their new series comes along, everybody, everybody gets a little more attentive. Um, and you know the stakes are pretty high when you're rolling out a new Star Trek television series. So of course there was a lot more um, attention paid to what the books were doing, and uh, you know we got to work very closely with members of the writing staff, particularly Kirsten Beyer, who over she was sort of the go-between between CBS Consumer Products and the authors at Pocket Books, and so she was very involved in the development of the stories, meaning that we bounced ideas off of her. She made suggestions on where we could and couldn't go, what she'd like to see explored with these new characters, um, what, you know, where the, where the, where the lines were drawn, I guess, and you know, how far we could go astray or not at all, that kind of thing. Um, so because the show was being developed at the same time, uh, you know, there were a lot more, uh, questions to be answered as far as, you know, how would this character react in this situation? How, what's the relationship between these characters? We didn't have that knowledge that we have with, Next Generation and the original series and the other classic uh, shows. So in that regard, it was a lot more challenging. It was a lot more, in, it was it was closer to writing an original novel straight up than a tie-in. Does that present a, um, a unique set of challenges then, not having, writing, writing for these characters that are going to appear uh, uh, in, in canon, if you will, in the TV show? Um, does it present a unique set of challenges because you've, you've got to basically anticipate what they're going to be doing without sort of knowing? Or um, like David, uh, who was sort of instrumental in, in, in a few of the background characters, was that sort of something that was your experience? Well, we, we had, I had access to a lot of the same information. So, I mean, I knew what they were doing. I knew, I knew the stories they were developing and the arc they were creating for the characters. Um, in that regard, it's it was similar to writing you know for one of the other Star Trek series, but you know again they were they were developing things uh, as they went, and uh, I was writing my book at the same time, so I you know I I had to I had to sometimes pause and then make a phone call or drop an email uh, because I wasn't necessarily I just didn't have the familiarity with these new characters that I would with let's say Kirk or Picard, uh, so there was a lot more a lot more tentative stepping around potential landmines and things like that, you know, cause you want to do it right. Um, 
and because they're developing the characters, they have a they have a better grasp of what they're looking for, and uh, and you want to do you want to stay in sync with what's going to be shown on screen. You don't want to you know you don't want to write something and have it overwritten immediately, <laughs> which is a risk when you write a tie-in. You know, um, it was, but it's not it's not it wasn't a negative experience. It was a lot of fun. It was just a lot more involvement from other people as I'm writing that I'm used to if you know if you if you understand my meaning yes yeah, something something different is it was it an, was it an exciting difference uh, to to be able to get in with these characters basically from from the ground up oh absolutely uh, it was a it was a tremendous amount of fun and I was very I had known what was going on in a, in, a, in a general sense because Kirsten and I had talked you know several times before I, I was even at approached about writing the novel so I, I had some ideas about where the show was going and so I was excited to see it all start to come together and then of course to be asked to do something like this where I would get access to a lot of material months before it would be made available to the public uh, it was it was a lot of fun I, I mean it was uh, it was definitely a highlight of my so-called writing career <laughs> Knowing in advance, uh, several months before before the general public uh, knew what's going on with, with Discovery, um, was it exciting to see the reaction um, from, let's say, majority of fandom uh, to to Discovery? I had a range of emotional reactions, everything from you know wow to amusement. To, <laughs> I mean, because uh, I, I you know I had signed non disclosure agreements, so I was not permitted to talk about anything before it was publicly known. Um, and any statements I made about my involvement had to be cleared, uh, you know, that kind of thing. So I just chose to keep my mouth shut for the most part uh, and do my job. Uh, however, when the, you know, once, when every little morsel of information started getting leaked, you know, when they started priming the pump before the premiere and all the message boards are going insane and I'm just sitting back laughing because I know where things are going even before the first show airs. And then as, as the shows, as the episodes roll out, and and they start to peel back the layers a little bit, and, pe and fans start connecting dots, and you know, under and you know, to be fair, some of the plot twists were guessed by fans, uh, you know, ahead of time, and I said nothing. You know, in fact, I didn't even tell my wife what the story was doing. Uh, you know, I didn't want to spoil anybody's fun. Uh, so it was fun to watch it. It was fun. It was it was entertaining to to watch fans spin all these theories. Get worked up. Appreciate the fact that some people were able to do certain things, and then laugh about the crazy conspiracy theories that were getting that were getting spun, and then just you know go back to work. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's what's next for you, Dayton? Well, I'm working on a few things for uh, a couple other clients. Uh, I'm balancing a, a regular day job with my writing again, and so I've got uh, a couple of projects that have not yet been announced that I'm hoping you know will will come out. People will know what I'm working on here shortly. A couple of them are Star Trek related. Um, so I've been having, you know, I've just been doing my normal. I, I, work, I work full time during the day and then I try to balance that with writing on the weekends and at night. Well, that's that's absolutely fantastic. And you are a New York Times best-selling author. Just as a final question to you, Dayton, how, how does that make you feel? Well, it was weird when it happened. <laughs> and, you know, it was a very fleeting thing, let's be fair and honest here. It didn't last that long. Uh, I think it lasted one week. And, um, but it still it, counts. Like, it, it counts. And it's, it's, it's funny because it's like being an Oscar nominee or an Emmy nominee. Once you get that, <laughs> you know, it's, you're branded for life. You, you get a little. That's it. You are a nominee. <laughs> you get a badge and a card and a button and they brand you and all that kind of thing. And, they, and they'll slap that. They'll use it. I mean, and I'm told by the people who do this for a living that it does matter in terms of increasing book sales. Um, there seems to have been an effect, but I mean, what it means to me is that, you know, my, I, people are liking what I'm doing and my editors like calling me back and putting me to work. So I appreciate that aspect of it for sure. Well, it's fantastic, Dayton. I can't wait to get a hold of your new novel. And in fact, we haven't actually mentioned the name of the novel. What's, yeah, what's, what's the name of your discovery novel? We should, I, we should mention it. Yeah, I guess we should probably talk about it. Um, <laughs> my novel is called Drastic Measures, and it is the second of the discovery novels, the first being Dave Max Desperate Hours, um, where Dave's is a prequel that's set about a year prior to the show. Mine is set 10 years prior to the show and features uh, Philippa Giorgio and Gabriel Lorca teaming up on Tarsus IV. Uh, which, of course, hardcore Star Trek fans should recognize that planet from the original series episode, The Conscience of the King. Can you tell us a little bit more? Oh yeah, sure. They get to deal with the uh, <laughs> they get to deal with the aftermath of the 
execution of 4,000 colonists by the governor of that colony, Kodos, who will later become Kodos. Who you know, history will regard him as Kodos, the executioner. So we find out how that happened and the fallout of that very heinous decision of his and uh, how Starfleet reacts to that and how people on the planet react to that. Um, it was a interesting little piece because I got to pair up these two characters who, uh, you know, don't see each other on screen, uh, um, at least in this way. <laughs> uh, not spoiling much for the book, not to want to spoil the show, but uh, this is the first time they meet in this particular fashion. So um, I have I was given a tremendous amount of latitude uh, doing this, so I had a ball with it. Well, it's, it's interesting, too, because now we know the truth about the Lorca that we've seen uh, in the show. I, I am assuming that the Lorca in your book is the prime Lorca? You could assume that, that maybe, maybe, is he? I don't know. You have to read the book. Oh, well, yeah, we're just going to have to check it out. Uh, well, uh, well, well, then, well, then that, that sort of defeats the next question that I was going to ask you, which was if indeed he is Prime Lorca. Well, actually, it can work as a question. Let me frame it this way. If indeed he is Prime Lorca, and we know that Mirror Lorca was on the show, could that, how, how would that be for a writer um, to, to be able to establish different sort of character traits for, for a character uh, that then we're going to see? Assuming that was the case, that would be a unique <laughs> challenge. I will, I will leave it to <laughs> readers to decide if I met that challenge or if that challenge was even posed. Uh, now well, I think it's, the readers, it's, spoiled, it's been spoiled at this point. People have reviewed it and posted it publicly, so I can, I can say it now. It's like, yes, it is, it is prime Lorca. Uh, so I, you know, I held off when the book was released and waited for people to actually review it and post it online. But once Star Trek.com did it and TrekMovie.com did it and Trek Korg did it, I'm off the hook. Yes, it is. Uh, it is prime Lorca. <laughs> well, was that a unique challenge for you then, um, and and a way of people getting seeing what Mirror Lorca was like, and and then wanting to know more about Prime Lorca? We had a lot of conversations about how to portray Lorca in the book, um, because at the time, it was not 100% nailed down when the book would be released. Would it be released before the revelations on the show or after? And if so, how would it be handled? And of course, none of that's in my control. Um, that's that's a decision made between the publishers and, and and CBS and everything. So I'm just the writer monkey. I go where I'm told. Um, <laughs> but res with respect to you know how, what kind of a person is Prime Lorca? How does he differ from his mirror universe counterpart? You know, we did have several conversations about that and the fact that the his involvement in the events of this particular story shape him or affect him and how they do that differently than they affect Giorgio, that was a driving theme throughout the book. That's one of the things that we that I really had a lot of fun exploring. Um, so try to give you an idea of what, what Gabriel Lorca would be like 10 years later, but not tip, you know, not tip the fact that uh, you're looking at Mirror what Universe Lorca all along. Um, it was an interesting, interesting challenge, and believe me, it was a subject of several conversations, both phone and email. <laughs> <laughs> well, fantastic, Dayton. Drastic Measures is out now, and I cannot wait to see what's next uh, from you. Thank you so much for your time today. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it.